when I first read Chariots of the Gods, I couldn't put that book down because it answered a whole bunch of questions that I had. And it was a great combination of archaeology and adventure. And it's just a wonderful way to see the world and pursue these ancient mysteries. And it truly was, I think, the catalyst for what people like I do today, and that is to talk about the mysteries and the unusual and the paranormal. He paved the way for a lot of us to talk about these strange stories, and that continues to grow, and it's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. People want answers to questions that they can't answer themselves. But in spite of the book's enormous popularity, or perhaps because of it, von Daniken's theories were scorned by scientists and jeered at by theologians. Of course, it created a storm of controversy. I was completely attacked, especially by the scientific newspapers. They said, come on, he's just telling story. He's a liar or he's a fraud or whatever. There is not a single piece of evidence that von Daniken puts forward that cannot be attributed to human ingenuity, technology, and development. Don't try to reduce the scriptures to a science book, or don't try to reduce the scriptures to an explanation of our modern world today. I don't expect that the scientific community now embraces and kisses me and say, oh, wonderful, great you did. We have to live with critics. This is normal. Chariots of the God was full of speculation. I had 238 question marks. Nobody read the question mark. They always said, Mr. von Däniken is saying, and I did not say, I asked the question, would that be a possibility that in Chariots of the God, I made clear differences between speculations and facts. But as controversial as many of von Däniken's theories are, believers point to tangible evidence. How, for example, could a centuries-old map chart a landmass that has only recently been discovered. It would tend to indicate that the map was made at a time when Antarctica was ice-free, which would be many millions of years ago. And how could a primitive civilization know how to harness electricity or even build a computer? This was tantamount to finding a jet airplane in the tomb of King Tut. And just who were these mysterious designs, only visible from high altitudes, intended for? The signs are made for somebody who flies. There's no way out of this. Could von Daniken's theory that ancient gods were really alien visitors contain any serious scientific merit? The answer involves a search around the world, and even right before our eyes.